Valtteri right. Network. What's good, guys? Welcome back to Talking at the Movies. I'm Eddie Reese Antonio. I'm Mo. And it's your boy Asylum here. Yes. Um, it is I. I'm out of hiding to join us for uh, our end of year episode. I have come out the dark woods of East London. He, he's allowed have, like he's allowed once to go I've out like, the whole year. All the vampires, the demons. He got permission, basically. Yeah, well, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> that was when you get married. <laughs> uh, how, how's it going, guys? Oh, it's been good. You know, just chilling. Christmas yeah. holiday. Yeah. Doing nothing cool day. Forcing yourself to watch all those films you put off watching. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's mad that we're going to be going back to work. Actually, in about three days' time, it's gone so quickly for us anyway, Mo, because me and Eddie work in the same office. You three are. I, I've, I've got like another week. Oh, I'll consist if we can have another week, so come on. Ain't, dude, ain't happening, man. Come on. Ain't happening. Man. I wish. I wish. What's the point? <laughs> Wait, what, this. Actually, this is the lifestyle I want. Yeah, but you work from home anyway. Like on a, no, a couple Tuesday. of days, I still have to come in. Mm. It's getting cold now. Not like it that. Is. Anyway, oh, this cold. week, guys, it's we're cold. going to be talking about <laughs> our top five films of 2021 and our top five TV shows of 2021, each respectively of what we loved and yep. you, and you even probably what? hated as well. This year should be really interesting because I think this is the year like Salem has probably watched more stuff than you and I combined. Yeah, like, there's a it, lot of stuff I never got around to. Yeah. So, um, yeah, well, it's be interesting. It, it will be. Um, I was actually. It's 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 a really weird thing, isn't it? Right at the beginning of the year, right all throughout the year, watching all this TV, all this film. But when you when you're sitting down, you're making your list. You're like, oh my god. Wasn't that from 2020 or wasn't that from? But no, it's freaking this year. It's yeah. gone by so quick. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, keep a journal of what you watch. It's much easier. <laughs> How many things are you gonna go? Oh, oh I forgot about that. Bunch. <laughs> I've accepted it. I let it go. It's not gonna be a big deal. Right. And um, at the end, we'll probably look forward to upcoming films of 2022 as yeah. well. The same yep. what we're looking forward to. And we're doing an, an extra bonus because we're going to go through the top five TV and film for Empire after each one of us has finished our list. Comparing. Right? Yeah, comparing, yeah. See what the artsy fartsy Empire magazine thinks should have been the top five. So what should we start oh. with? Film or TV? TV should. Come yeah. Let's go with TV. So which, which out of three will begin? Top five. Number five. Mo. Number five for Mo. Right. So it's really tough with a number five because your number five is like, we're going to make your cut off. And you're kind of thinking, what show am I going to start with? And then there's a whole bunch of shows underneath that you go, I really want to put this and I really want to put that. So after we've given that five, yeah, we should probably give our, we should probably give our honorary, honorary mentions or things that didn't make our list, but we feel like, yeah, should be mentioned. absolutely. So number five, um, it's a show that got so little press. Uh, but it's one you and I really liked and we really enjoyed, but no one else was talking about. And it is Heels. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. He forgot it. You know what? Eddie constantly ah. told me, he goes, you must watch this show, Salem. You must watch it. Now to see Eddie God holding his head like this, clearly, <laughs> it's off his list. Fuck me. <laughs> But you, but you sit there and thinking, how could I cobble five shitty shows together? This year has been terrible. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> so, Mo, tell me, why did you like Heels? What was so it about? Heels, it? I thought, was um, it was a really great drama that depicted life um, in the wrestling industry, right? Like, we only ever see like the glitz and the glams of the WWE. But this was like a. It was like a local show where people were getting paid like, you know, 50 bucks to like wrestle for the weekend or something. There was a great story between like two brothers, one who was a good guy, the other guy who thought he was a good guy, wanted to be a good guy. But in reality, like he was an arsehole. Um, And then the whole thing around his relationship with his valet, it was just all great drama. Would you agree? Yeah, I loved it. <laughs> not, enough, been... <laughs> not enough to be in your top five, though. <laughs> it should have been in my top fucking five. I can't believe I forgot about that show. It wasn't even that long ago. Oh. Yeah, it was like August or something. 
Damn it. Damn it. Um, all right, I might as well go next. My number five, which honestly, if I'd remembered Hills, probably would have uh, knocked it off. <laughs> <laughs> that was Foundation. Apple oh. Plus is sci-fi epic, which it truly was. Grown up sci-fi, which, you know, it's always good. There isn't that much of it nowadays. So, yeah, I, I had a lot of fun with this. It's a slow burn, but a slow burn I still enjoyed mm-hmm, mm-hmm. very much. Mm-hmm. It All indeed right. was a very slow burn, but a very... Uh, it, it's one of those that you don't really mind it being slow. No, no, not at all. True all definition right. of an epic. Um, so mine was a new show that's recently dropped called Dope Sick. I wanted um, to watch this, but I could never find time. It's uh, the Michael so Keaton one. It is the Michael Keaton one, and I'll go so far as saying, and this for me was, I mean, it just tells a story about this sort of drug called Oxycontin released in the US market. Might be able to get it in Europe and other countries as well, but it just literally took over, and people were getting more hooked to this than like things like heroin. Yeah. Um, and uh, it's a brilliant story. I said this to Mo when I met up with him mm-hmm. that I think this is Michael Keegan's best performance that I've ever seen. Better, so, better than Beetlejuice, better than Batman. Totally, Beetlejuice is <laughs> he a really do nothing in Batman. Let's be honest, <laughs> he was joking, but yeah, I, I mean, Beetlejuice was brilliant, but. Th- you have to see this because I don't want to give too much away. If you have yeah, not seen this, definitely, it. I would say I would have pushed it further. But Dope Six hits number five for me. Definitely. One suggestion or something. You pull that mic slightly further away from your mouth because I'm getting popping. Yeah. Is that better? Yeah, that's fine. That's perfect. Oh, number four. Right. Want, so number four. Oh, do you want Empires, by the way? Or do you want to... Oh, yeah, yeah, why not? What right, happen? Empire's number five was a show called Midnight Mass. Ah, I've heard Netflix. loads of people talk about this. Yes, another one I never got around to. I've heard it's supposed to be very good, but it kind of fits into that category of show that I don't really want to watch or pay attention to. Yeah, well, it, I don't know. Just, he don't like horror, does he? It, well, it's not, it's not about it's not horror though, is it? It's more. It's, um, Kind of it's small town kind of. I mean, it probably it's one of those shows that I don't want to watch, but I know when I watch it, I'll yeah, be really yeah. into it. Yeah, yeah, it's that kind of thing, right? It is. Yeah. It, yeah. I think that's how I felt about Dope Sick. I knew it was going to be good, but I kind of never yeah. got into the headspace of feeling like, okay, this is this isn't going to be a joyful thing. But oh, yeah, let me get to it. Um, right, number four, really surprising. Um, really did not think I would be adding a Greg Belanti show to like a top five. But I've got to say, Superman and Lois uh, was just fantastic from start to yeah, end. And I'm so looking forward to season two. Um, all the crap that they do in, in the other shows hasn't yet reared its ugly head. Um, and they look as though they spent a lot of money on this show as well. So like, yeah, really enjoyed this. Yeah, fun show surprised me because I had no no hopes that this would be any yeah, good. You were like, I might watch the first episode. <laughs> yeah, just for the intention of just slating it, but it surprised I me. Mean, we, good show. We rank like, I mean, this is really surprising to me because when you're saying Superman and Lois, I'm like, really? Number four? How can that be possible? But if you're saying it's that good, and everyone actually that I've it's, spoken to says that it is amazing. It's on the iPlayer now, so go go watch it, Silent. It's All just right. enjoyable, really. Hmm. Yeah. Um, my number four, kind of kind of like Moe's, another superhero show, but on the opposite side, the rivals, Hawkeye. This was a joy for me. Hate Hawkeye, hate the character, did not expect this show to be any good, but it entertained me thoroughly every week. I was just always looking forward to it. The banter, the energy of the show, just the vibe, it was just a lot of fun. Number four, definitely. I, I was very indifferent on this one. Like, great finale. They, I mean, they really rammed it home, but I think the run-up to it. All the way through. For me, every <laughs> episode was just fun. It's a fun. It's a fun show. Was it? Is it like, um, I remember you saying, first of all, when you saw the trailer, it was like a, a bit of a diehard thing, right? It Did, has that say- Christmas, it's that Christmas action. Any action that's dr- set during Christmas where there's snow and... Christmas songs in the background kind of has that vibe. Love kiss good night. <laughs> don't, don't you miss that? Like a good old action Christmas. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It's all frigging rom coms and kids' films for Christmas now. What's, what happened to the good Christmas action? Died. 
I think Shane Black's not making them. <laughs> yeah. Pretty, yeah. <laughs> so uh, my number four, or four is a show that my wife got me into is The Good Morning Show Season 2. This show, um, Apple, Apple TV, yeah. yeah, so well put together. Um, everyone is is just has their characters are so well written. It's so brilliantly directed. Um, I it's again, I didn't think I would enjoy it, but I loved it. I loved everything about it. I couldn't wait until season two, and it dropped uh, mid this year. I think it was uh, around about September or July time. But again. Yeah. I keep hearing how good the show was, man. Mm, I do. Are, are you watching it just for Jennifer Aniston, or is it actually some sub substance to the show? No, 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 no. You've got a Jennifer Aniston is brilliant in it. Um, but everybody, like I said, there's some brilliantly well written characters. Um, and I, I love the way it's directed. I, I, I see the look on Eddie's face like she's just too old for him. <laughs> <laughs> she's all right, I guess. Um, um yeah. so yeah. so if you haven't seen it. Check that out. Um, I want and, to, but I'm lazy. There's not enough time. I didn't have to and, work for another <laughs> week or two. But maybe. And uh, I'll give you Empires. Number four is Succession Season 3. This is a show <laughs> I need to watch. Yes. Everyone's always talking about this bloody Succession. Yeah. And it sounds like it'll be right up my alley because it's like funny. It's like a very, it's a series show, but it's no. funny. I'm not hearing that it's funny. Yeah, it's, I'm hearing it's that it's not, like a game yeah. of modern day Game of Thrones, but it's family that's that every, are just backstabbing yeah. each yeah, other. Yeah, it's I think I believe it's it's probably like black humor. Yep, yep, yeah. I saw season uh I, I saw most of season one, and then we for some reason we stopped watching it. But weirdly, my sister's watching it, so like and she loves it. So yeah, it's um, kind of turning into the big cultural thing, this one. Mm, so yeah. yeah, I need to get on this one. I have to, yeah. Right then, number three for me. So Eddie's already mentioned this one, uh, but I rated it a little bit higher. I thought it was one of the more epic shows of the year. Uh, this was Apple TV's Foundation. Um, beautiful to look at. Mm. Beautiful storyline. Mm. Like he said, it is a very slow burn. A lot of people will probably get put off after the first couple of episodes, but it is so worth uh, just hanging in there till the end to see that, that journey. Yeah. My number, what were we on? Three? Yep. It's actually a show that literally just finished. And it's like a comfy blanket, you know, something familiar, something, a blanket that you've lost. And then you find it and you just realize that, oh, I missed this. It's so nice to be wrapped myself in this. And that's Dexter, New Gods. Oh, hasn't finished right. yet. No. Two, two episodes still left. Oh, shit. Has it? Yeah. <laughs> wow, well, you're right. How could I not realize that? He's playing his money where his mouth is. Okay, okay, I'm going to switch that off from a show. Oh, God. Oh, so I have to pick a show which wasn't even in my list. No, I mean, you can, you can put it by all no, means. No, I don't. It has you're, to be complete. You yeah, can't it has judge to be it. complete. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you're putting your money where... I mean, those last two episodes could suck now. Well, you know, Eddie, you should stick to it. All right. If if, if mean, you be, if you guys give me a pass, because, oh yeah, no, I mean yeah, yeah. the it's rule up, should it, be it should be a completed show, but it doesn't have to be because no, no, no. it's it's out. It, the, there's been loads of episodes. I mean, like the rule. I mean, obviously you could also pick it How next could year. I not realize it ain't finished yet. <laughs> we just talked about it like two days ago. Yeah, I've been loving this so far, man. It's just I love the original Dexter, at least the first few ep for seasons, and um, mm -hmm. this has just been fun getting back to it, man, and seeing him just go around. Killing people. So, so I've yeah. I've watched five episodes so oh, right, far. Okay. Oh. So yes, me and my wife okay, we've done five right. episodes. Have you, have you enjoyed it? Yeah. Again, like the, the only thing that I find slightly bit annoying about this show is his sister. So, oh, is his sister keeps really? jumping She's in? There, though. She's uh, there, it's though. just these moments of her just like I feel that she overplays that character a bit I, too much. I have seen a lot of people say that, but to me. She's a figment of his imagination yes, and he yes, killed her, yes, right? So yes, it's yes, kind yes. of like it's the thing it's, is though, the actress has always been very great in the way she talks. It's always but, like ah. Yeah, but she's <laughs> amplified like yeah. seriously in this. But yeah, I'm 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 enjoying this. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Right. All right. Okay. Uh so my number three is Squid Games. Ooh. Uh, yes, I I I just this was a show that every time it would finish. I will want to know, like the next game, yeah, and and, and who's what next? who who's the next victim, and it was I got this completely wrong. 
who I thought was going to be victorious in it. I thought it was a girl, but, didn't you? Yeah, I thought it was the girl she was going to win. But <laughs> oh, we ruined it. It's spoiler. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but again, um, love the show um, and uh, thoroughly enjoyed it. So if you haven't seen it, Squid yeah. Games... It was quite the cultural phenomena when it came out. It was like oh, yeah. one of those shows that like everyone was talking about. Well, well the, the thing about this, this for me anyway, is like, you know, when people are like talking about it, like when you a bit too much, the hype for you is is kind of just kind of, for me anyway, it just dies down slightly. If it, mm. there's just constantly people talking because I'm yeah. expecting something amazing. And this time around, I, I was, I was like, really excited about it. it enjoyed every single episode Eddie you when you said hey you must check this show out you weren't wrong I, I loved it and I think I could I can't wait for season two as well so yeah I can't wait because I'm a little because they never planned to do another season initially yes. yes but success has been so much that they feel like they have to so that worries me because you're kind of having to cobble together a story and maybe it would have been better just to leave it hanging like this you kind of hope that the um korean work ethic will be better than a like an american like work ethic right when they come to making that new show they won't do do a a lazy like cut and paste job they will they will try and do something new Uh... Well, see, it all depends on all these new characters, right? And if they do re-enter the Squid Game, so... Uh... Well, I, I think the, the creator's already been on record to say, like, this one's going to concentrate more on the police this time, right? Um, so I, I guess it's them tracking down what's going on. Already very different. Mm. Which is good. Like, you don't want to repeat the same thing. I, I want to go back to the suggestion that I had that they should have just transplanted the Squid Games to another country. There are multiple Squid Games they established that it's happening all around the world. So give me a French Squid Games. Give me a, an Italian. Give me, you know, just take think, it somewhere else. Yeah, that would be that would be really enjoyable. I think that's the way they should have gone, but, you know. Well, yeah. yeah. So what, the Empire? Uh, yeah, Empire three. is WandaVision. Number three. Oh yeah, wonder, wonder, wonder. Did you forget about that? <laughs> no, 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 no. Well, yeah. I, I, I'm sure at one point I thought about it, <laughs> but it started off too rocky for me. Like it took oh, too. No, I didn't no, like no. the no, 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 the no. first few because the sitcom stuff just. I like the stylistic. Yeah. Star, what they were trying to achieve, but it wasn't successful as a sitcom. Those first mm. two or three. It was just. I don't think it was trying to be a sitcom. I think it was just like trying to show it's it's in a sitcom. It was. Yeah, but it literally was having jokes that were supposed to be funny, but just... But they were like... I mean, if you go back and watch like an episode of like, I Love Lucy, you probably won't find that funny now. Um, Although I highly recommend you watch the film because they show how much thought went into every little thing in the show. It's actually quite interesting. Okay. Yeah. Right. So number two then. This is a show... I didn't think would make like my top five, uh, let alone like it be in the top two. Um, and again, I feel it's one that has had very little buzz and very little praise, but it's been one of the best shows like head and shoulders this year. And it was Amazon Prime's Invincible. Was that? that... Yeah, that was this year. <laughs> <laughs> that, was... that was definitely, no, that was definitely this year. Eddie. I saw it <laughs> on the list. Hold on, I gotta look this up. <laughs> I thought that was last year. Nope, that was this year, Eddie. Fuck me. And this is a show which is really surprising that if it's not on your clearly not on your list now, no. right? That I'm so surprised <laughs> that you <laughs> let this off because you were the one take. Oh my god. It's the best thing ever, man. You gotta check the shit out. <laughs> oh, you this fuck. Eddie's making us look so unprofessional. Do you know that I had a list <laughs> that it was on? But for some reason, when I came back to it, I thought, no, that's 2020. Just just a Google Doc. Put the title in there. TV shows 2021. You know what this seems like? You know, like you know that bottle that you were just drinking just now? You you had a few too many and you were living in 2019. You know what? It sounds like you don't even go to Google and say shows of 2021. Half the time, I can't be asked. <laughs> Can I knock off foundation and just put invisible instead? No, that, that's the rule. You've got to stick with what you got. <laughs> love this show. Fine, don't, fine, didn't love fine, it that much. fine. I'm it, not going to argue. Did not, you did not love it that much. <laughs> Damn it. See, if I was Eddie, I would have just kept quiet. I'd just changed my leg. Next See, that's <laughs> what I would have done, man. <laughs> yeah, but I don't want to knock off the other two, though. Oh, right. Then what is your okay. number two? Oh, yeah, number what's two the number two is Squid Game. 
Yeah. All right. Um, yeah. It's just uh, I think that got to it before the hype got built up too much. So mm. you know that, that that didn't ruin it. So I just enjoyed the the journey of this group of people trying to survive. You know, for their, for their greed. The thing about this show, right, Ed, is that I didn't think that I was going to enjoy it watching it with the subtitles. But for me, I mean, that's the reason why it's on my, another reason why it's on my top five is because watching this show with this, um, sorry, with, with the dubbed, excuse me, with the dubbed, right? I still was like completely invested in it. Which one of us would have lasted longest in a squid game? Obviously Last. me. Why? Because I can follow instructions. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't mean nothing. Well, well, you because you're the heaviest, right? In the first game, you would have survived the longest because uh, well, when it game, turned around, <laughs> um, I think it would have been me, right, Eddie? What? Well, yeah, definitely. Why? Because I would have been the one that's backstabbing you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I think Mo would be the stabber because he just wants to get back to his yeah. cats. That would be Actually, his driving Mo motivation. Would be, would be the one. No, Mo would be the one saying to me, Salim, you got five marbles yeah. in your hands. <laughs> like, yeah. But hold on. Let no. me hold them for you whilst you go yeah. around to see what everybody else has yeah, got. So that's the fuck up Mo would be. I can neither yeah. confirm nor deny. <laughs> I see it. I see it. All right. Um, yeah. Number two. Fun. All right. Um, number t- 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 two for me is t- 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 Mayor of East Town. I'm so annoyed that I never got to finish this. I always meant to get back to it. I, I am so surprised it. that you guys, I mean, especially when it comes down to Dope Sick and, and Mayor of East Town, you guys didn't check these shows out. Too much. Because Every week, there's so much we're watching, man. It's I think Kate probably- Winsler got freaking awards for this show, man. Yeah, dude, I, from what I, from the episodes I saw, it was great. The mystery was uh, unraveling, but something else just got in the way, and then I just never got time to come back to it. But annoying. I, I am seeing this popping up like on on the people's list now at the end of the year and at the top of the list as well. Yeah, this show for me, right, was just another one of those. I've her performance in it was just absolutely amazing. But I haven't seen her. I'm what I haven't seen in in anything for like. Th- is this like she hasn't done something? For some time, has she? Like Kate Winslet, if I'm not mistaken. Not big, I guess. Yeah. She's but probably still sitting off their residual checks off of like Titanic, right? <laughs> but her performance was so freaking convincing. Yeah. Um, and and un- unraveling the mystery and who did it. And sometimes these shows can get a bit annoying, but this one did it so well. Literally, we were like all over the place, like, you know, like you keep wanting to change your mind. Yeah, he like, did it. She did guy. it. No, it's she. No, it's her. It was the, yeah. like the bullies. No, no. Yeah, yeah, very, very good. And uh, empires uh, is Empire. number two, mayor of Easttown. Okay. All right. So, so uh, Mo. So numero the, uno. The grand prize from season one. Do we do? The almost runs now, or do we wait until after the ones after, are done? After, after. after. So this is a show we've already mentioned. I, I don't think it's going to feature on any of your guys' list, but my favourite oh, was say Walker. absolutely... <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, but it is an MCU show. It is WandaVision. Oh. Um, that show spoke to me on so many different levels. I know people have complained about like those first batch of episodes, but to me, truly, that's where the magic was. Like recreating like that atmosphere of those shows that I used to watch after school. So is that what it is? Because it's always fascinated me what it was that really. I, I did enjoy One Division overall, but yeah. you were so Adam right from the beginning. You were right in there. Oh, it was that. It was the whole sitcom thing. Like you, like you guys know, I absolutely love sitcoms. Like when I've got like nothing to do and I've got like twenty minutes to kill, I always just sit down and just watch a rerun of like a sitcom or something. You just pick a random episode and just go. Um and the fact that in the show they also then show like a young Wanda watching yeah. like a sitcom with her family. Um and like remembering that's like a bonding exercise for her and stuff just just loved the whole show. It was just fantastic. Speaking of which, when is um Fraser gonna pop up on some streaming service because I really want to watch that. I'd imagine it'll be on Paramount Plus because it's a CBS show in the UK when it launches, probably on like now or four channel four's one or but, something. But it is funny, I, I watch like random episodes of that almost every day. So, uh, <laughs> going back to Wonder Vision, Eddie, was it? I mean, you seem like you really didn't enjoy it, but no, am I, I, did. I right? I liked I, it, it was just 
didn't get deep good for me until halfway. So that's not really enough for it to be in the list if it only half a I, season. Good. I really like that whole black and white thing that they they pulled off at the beginning and and the direction they took it. Visually. I was like, I think because I just wasn't expecting that. And and I like Mo with the whole sitcom yeah. thing, Bewitched and, and all that. I I thoroughly enjoyed it. Yeah, and just Visually, a little, it, but... just a little touches, like you know, like how every episode that different opening credits that matched mm. a, a, a sitcom, or like when they were rearranging furniture and stuff. You looked around at the rooms and they were set out like famous sitcom living rooms mm. and kitchens and stuff. Just oh, a proper love letter that show. All right, Eddie, my number one, um, strange one for some people but for those that actually made the effort to check it out you know i think people if you love it agree this is the league of legends tv show arcane which for me was just a joy to watch man i really love this i'm gonna say something here controversial i tried to watch this i got like 20 odd minutes into the first episode i just could not take it anymore the animation is gorgeous i will give you that it is absolutely beautiful i got pulled in the characters just didn't do i got pulled into the stories and the characters i really did and um yeah i just had so much fun with this so wait i I think you tried to introduce uh, this to me as well made me watch the trailer if i'm not mistaken yeah but you were feeling it yeah yeah Uh, what is this on netflix is it Mm -hmm. it is yeah i mean it's worth watching at least one episode just to see the animation because the animation is like absolutely stunning yeah it is a world where just stylistically you leave a love or hate purely on your own sort of views on the aesthetics of it's not steampunk but it kind of has those elements and sometimes that can really put people off stylistically the stone doesn't please them but for me i just i just fell into it man didn't expect anything going into it and just have so much joy this truly should have been <laughs> should probably be Squid Games if I had rearranged everything and had that Invincible in there. But no, I'm still with it. <laughs> okay, number one. Um, all right. So it seems like we've all got really, really different ones here. So my number one is uh, a horror show that dropped. I think it was around about mid mid June or July, but a show called Dem. What? Oh, yes. Them. This is the Amazon one. Them. Yeah, an Amazon one, which is basically was just a horror TV show about a black family moving into this neighborhood back in mm. the, uh, I think it's the 60s. And th- 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 is I it like you, us? Because people kept saying it was kind of like us. Kind of, right. But the thing about the show is that it made me feel so uncomfortable. And then whenever I would meet any of my white friends, I would say to them, I want you to watch them, right? And they will watch one episode, right? And feel so uncomfortable about this whole thing that they would just say, I can't watch anymore. We can't watch anymore. Um, and it's it's just really, the really yeah, it's just me yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I love this show, I loved everything about it. Um, and the other thing um about the show is that it was really every single episode freaked me out. And you know, where you've got all these horror movies. And I think uh, a couple of years ago, Haunting of Hill House was like my number one. Mm. Again, I, it's something that I needed again from a TV show and, and, and I got it from, from them. So absolutely enjoyed it. it. It sounds similar, not identical to, um, I, th- I think a show we were watching called Lovecraft Country, uh, oh, yeah. which had very similar kind of elements. Which I never finished. No, I never finished that as well. And it, didn't, it got cancelled as well. So. Oh, yeah. So I'll give you Empires, which is a show called It's a Sin, uh, talking oh, about the AIDS pandemic yeah. in the in, 80s. In Britain, yeah, in the 80s. Yeah. Never heard of it. Right. Uh, I believe it's, uh, yeah, Channel 4, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Did hear about it. Right. Honorable mentions. Ooh. Mo, you want to start? I've got a whole bunch here. Some you probably have seen, probably some you probably haven't even heard of. Um, HBO Max's um, Hacks, I thought was absolutely superb. Um, you, season three, I thought was yes, crazy. That's on mine as well. You. Proper crazy. Uh, Squid Games, Ted Lasso, Dexter. Ted Lasso as well on there. Masters of the Universe. And I oh, love that, by the way. That was, oh, nice, that was good. That, oh. was, that even touched my top five oh. list. There you go. Um, he, Matt, you, oh, okay. I loved it. 
I know, I know, I know you're more into the She-Ra stuff, but uh, that's yeah, okay. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And the one that was good, like, I was really tossing and turning, like, do I put this as number five or is it heels? And that was White Lotus because that was such an White Lotus one. again, very, very good. Yeah. 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 Um, Ted Lasso, you <laughs> invincible <laughs> heels. <laughs> yeah. Shame on you, Eddie, for not putting those in your, ah, like, no. only honorable mentions. Oh, such annoying, man. And it breaks my heart. I can't even add Always Sunny, the first shit season. Straight up. Has to, oh, has to be said. So no, I didn't, didn't even consider that. I wouldn't say it was shit. Though. It was. It was. Any any um, other ones you saw, Son? You didn't I know the, like, a, a lot of the ones that you guys mentioned anyway uh, were, were on my list. So, um, yeah, you oh. guys have highlighted them all. Mo, what was the other serial killer one that was on Netflix? With a guy that gets kidnapped and then it made it look like he was... A murderer. Oh, clickbait. Clickbait. That's another one that should be on there, man, because that, that was actually surprisingly fun. Yeah. All right. So transitioning to our top five films. Have you got Empire's List as well, Simon? I've got Empire's List lined up, right? Okay. So, Mo, number five. So I will say this year was a much better year for films than last year where like nothing came out. Right. So we've had a lot of theatrical stuff. Um, My number five, again, I really struggled with like, is it this or is it this other one? And I might have put this one here because I've just seen it quite recently. So it's a lot more like topical and in my head. But I really enjoyed Don't Look Up with Leonardo DiCaprio and Jennifer Lawrence. Um, It just I don't know if you have a chance to watch it yet, Salim. I haven't seen it yet. It, it is to do with like climate change, um, but it can be applied to absolutely anything um, that that movie. And it just shows like the right, that the sheer idioticy of like the human race. Yeah, we're doomed. We are just the people. Yes, <laughs> we doomed. are doomed. <laughs> yeah, that was a great film, man. It was, it was pretty good. I enjoyed it. Uh, my number five is a Ridley Scott joint. And that is The Last Duel. Mo was going on about this for a while. I finally got around to seeing it and uh, didn't disappoint. I enjoyed mm-hmm. this for it. Very. Did, did you get a chance? Because you said you were going to watch it, like, I think last week, Salim. I did watch it, yeah. You did, uh, yeah. Um, no comment on it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Eddie, I can't believe Eddie. you made me watch it. <laughs> 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 don't know what you two right. are talking about. <laughs> right. So, uh, is there anything else, Eddie? Is that it? Wow, he has no comment on the last <laughs> door. Just like, freeze. Oh, okay. Um, no, that's it. That's it. All right. Great, okay. Great um, cast. Great. Very intense. I love the way they retold that singular story three times, but from different perspectives. Too really for the main uh, the main incident, but how that diff- it can be perceived so differently from depending on you know the mentality of the persons or the people in it that witnessed it and or experienced it. It's, it's, it's a good cool film. Cool film. So. Um... You know, this top five was so bloody difficult, right? Because you're sometimes, you know, like Mo, you saw you saw a film just recently, mm-hmm. and because you've seen it, it, sometimes it kind of you feel like you wanna because it's fresh in your mind, you wanna push it to the top of the list. Yeah. Um, and it was really, really challenging for me because I, you know, you have to go back and you've got to think about how do I really feel about watching some of these movies? Um, so my number five is Dune. Um, I I love this film. I thoroughly enjoyed it, but for me, it's going to be number five. And and I feel the the reason why it would have gone higher for me, but I just wished there was something a bit more bigger towards the end. I needed something a bit more sort of like I don't know some more crazy yeah more. Mm-hmm. There you go, that's, that's, a bigger battle, okay. something. Or car chase, Vin yes. Diesel, you mean like you mean up. like like a yeah. second act, right? <laughs> Something a bit more whole, rather than yeah. like I mean we spoke about this mode, yeah. like um exactly. and I agree. The, the, the whole film is like a first act. Yeah, yeah. I just needed something a little bit more Some but Transformers jumping in. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> there you go. So so yeah. that was that Well no, was... someone's just got to say for the family, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah would it be wouldn't they be fighting my my number one was fast and the furious? <laughs> I would have fully fast. He, he, he's just he's gauging us now. Like, I've actually seen it yet. Like. I've seen it, Eddie. Yeah. Oh. Uh, <laughs> and, all right. And, okay. and, and, oh no, no, you'll find out. You'll find out. Oh, okay. <laughs> if you seen this list, I'm I'm not, never talking to you again. Never. All right. Talk okay. Again. I'll I'll give um I'll give Empires, which is a film called their number five is 
uh, West Side Story. Oh, the Steven Spielberg one. Mm. Yeah. All right. Okay. Rightio. Number four, mate. So my number four um, is Eddie's number five, um, Ridley Scott, The Last Duel. I've really, like, over lockdown, I've really come to appreciate, like, Ridley Scott. I've like, gone back and watched a, a load of his um, older films. Um, and the man is a master of his craft. No one is making films like him. No one is taking $100 million now and making, like, these, like, these period <laughs> epic types of movies. Um, and this one was just absolutely superb it did not deserve the financial crush that it got at the box office i think that was more of a, a studio thing it was just released at the wrong time they didn't know how to market it um the cast is a little bit odd as great it is, no, no, no. as it is everyone's good but ben affleck stands out like a motherfucker <laughs> he should not be in that he should have not been in See, to me it's reverse like I, he was my favorite because he was just <laughs> playing like a medieval version of himself <laughs> it, yeah, it just did not fit for me um, but we, I mean, we ended up having such a great conversation after that film, and that's what films should do, right? Mm. Like you can be able to sit down and dissect it and talk about it and just have a have a good time, like like uh, reliving it. Yeah, great. Uh, my number four is I care a lot. Oh, mm. you remember that? I do. Yeah, With, uh, uh, Rosalind Pike and. Yep. Um, uh, what's Peter Dinklage. Uh, yeah, yeah, Peter Dinklage. Diana West, a uh, whole bunch of motherfuckers. Yeah, it was great, man. I really enjoyed this film thoroughly. This is for us in the UK and for parts of Europe, Amazon Prime, but in the US, it's Netflix. Um, but yeah, this, this, I just enjoyed the ride of this. And this con woman who just screws over old people and puts them into homes and takes all of their money and their property, but then she meets a match. So I was going to watch this, but then for some reason, uh, we were looking at the dates, and for us, it was it, it just said 2020 because of the yeah the festivals. But it got its official so I, release. I, 20, yeah. It came out here in the UK in 2021. Yeah. Yeah. I would have watched that. I so wanted to watch it, but I thought, oh, it's 2020, so it doesn't. It's not going to enter the list. Well, you should good. always go to IMDb and look at what the um, the UK release date is. Yeah, but yeah. well, I will. Um, I will watch this though. It's very worth watching. What you know? What I didn't realize um, is. Um, when people were talking about like the whole Britney Spears thing, like this is definitely like something that's yeah. off of that, right? It doesn't you don't have to be old for this to happen yeah. to you? The the thing that I remember about this film was just the end, um, and I couldn't and I couldn't decide whether the end of the film was totally garbage or totally and absolutely genius. Uh, because the kind of the message it just gives you is it's not the one that you really it's not the one you wanted to be confronted with, right? You don't want but, to think you live in that kind of world. But that is the world, though. Yeah, you know, yeah. That's why I say I can't decide rubbish or genius. <laughs> yeah, nah, it, it, it works out genius for me. Really, really enjoyed that one. Um, yeah. yeah. All right. Um, so my number four is the last tool. I, I, I've got, oh. honestly, I'm not, I'm not even pissed. Okay. I've, I've got it. I've definitely got it on my list as number four. Um, uh, this, again, when I, all right, so the first act, chapter one, when I saw this, I was like, I, I didn't know what was going to come after, mm -hmm. right? So when they showed Matt Damon stuff, all right, a bit of a spoiler, and then they showed the other guy's stuff, his version of it, mm -hmm. I loved that. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, and I didn't mind Banifleck's performance. In actual fact, I liked his performance <laughs> as well. I found him like, like if, if I know what you mean, Eddie. I, I do know what you mean. He was the one that really stood out like a sore yeah. but I didn't mind that. I actually, I, I just came across this character and I thought to myself, look, it, let's just have fun with it. Um, and you know what? I, through this, I just thought to myself, this, even Matt Damon's version and the other guy's version is that, we treated this girl so nicely, you know, we cared about, but they yeah. treated her like trash. Yeah. They even said it, like the, the, the rape isn't an offense to the woman. It's the fact that it disrespected the man because it's her, his property. That was, yeah. oh. Yeah. Wow. Well, well, like he says, you would not be, he would not be the last man to have you. So like, you know, just. Yeah. <laughs> oh. or, or when they're talking about like, did you enjoy the rape? Uh, because like, the, the way they put it on, and it was just like, oh, come on. So, but, yeah, you uh, have to give a special mention. Arguably the best performance, to be honest, in the whole thing is Jodie Comer, because we ain't no. mentioning her, and we're just talking about everybody else, but she's the yeah. one that holds this whole film together. She does, she does. Um, and, and I will say that, like, this is shocking to me, that how this movie just got, like, just disappeared. Right. It just didn't even... No one was talking about it, like... 
and it was just awesome all the way through. So I tell yeah. you, I, I'm telling you, Scorsese and all these guys are onto something. Like these superhero movies, as much as we love them, are like crushing the 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 box office, right? Yeah. 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 Um, oh. So I'll give you um, Empires, which is a film called uh, No Man's Land or something. No man. No. Land. no uh, uh, I can't oh, pronounce no, this. No man, no man, no, no, oh, no, no, man. Oh, uh, no, yeah, the one from That's last year, though. No, no but I think it year. came out over here this year. How am I, how are we pronouncing this? No, dude, I, we've said it a hundred times. How can I not pronounce it now? No man's land, no man's land. No, no, it doesn't no, sound right. Not, no, no it doesn't. Right. Hold on, wait, oh, hold on. It's uh, no, no, no man, no man, ah, no man land. No yeah, man land? That, yeah, yeah. That one, that one, the Oscar, one that won the Oscar. Um, oh. Nomad Land. Nomad, sorry, it's Nomad, Nomad. Land. Nomad. 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 Nom- the D, the D is what we're missing. Nomad Land. Um, you, a film which I guess documentaries count, and it's not technically a documentary, but it should be considered a documentary more than a film because there's like three or four actors in it and everybody else is real real people talking about their real experiences as a nomad, so yeah, but it's an interesting uh, I was just checking, it, it's almost like it came out in every single country, in like uh, 20 well, I think it's all film festivals, so it literally just came to streaming in like 2021 mm. yeah. we'll, we'll give you a pass empire yeah, that's fine, just that this once <laughs> right, so number three so we're getting right down to the nitty gritty here um, so this was a tough one uh, but I've put, as my number three, I put Dune. I know it's appearing at the top of a lot of people's list, but I've got the same problem that Silent has got. It was a great film. I loved it visually. It was beautiful. It just feels like you've seen the first part of a film. Um, and I think it's the same problem that the, the Academy had with Lord of the Rings, where they gave like Lord of the Rings, the, the third film, so many awards like for all three films. And I, and I have no doubt, once the second film is here, and you see, like, the complete picture, it will be, like, you know, film number one. Mm. But I just feel there were a couple that just gave me, that just made me more satisfied after I watched them. Okay. Mm. My number three, Last Night in Soho. Ooh. I, this experience was, because I love the 70s. I love that setting for things. And this, or Egg Rat movie, with uh, Anya J. the toy, joy and a bunch of others just a great film man a great mystery just a great experience just the camera work the crazy sort of trickery they were using to do various uh i don't want to ruin it but various visual flourishes it's just a great it's a good film did you ever get around to this more i have got to watch this still um i know it's edgar wright so i should really jump in there because i've enjoyed most of his his um other work um but this one did look as though it was a slightly on the more crazy side um it's it's it not is. crazy is the word, but it's it is more it's different um, from his other stuff because his other stuff was very like action or comedy orientated. Yeah, I guess it's more. It's probably his most serious film. I guess. I, I this this girl. yeah this film visually it looked absolutely amazing, and again the way they portrayed the seventies was just like love it, love the music, yeah. love the and, style of it, and what that character had to go through as well. And the ending, obviously, is very, yeah. very interesting. So um, um, Matt Smith with his big head. Just, yes. Still somehow being a sex symbol. It's just bizarre to me. It's, just, it's so strange. But he was great in this. Uh, Thomasin McKenzie, a New Zealander, but nailed it as being a Londoner. Yeah, great film. Go watch it, Mo. Okay, I, I will. I will make yeah. that something I, I watch very soon. So my number three... Is a bit of a crazy one. All right. But I enjoyed the experience so much that it just had to be sit there. It better I, not be uh, Fast and Furious, man. It better not be. It is. It's the Zack Snyder cut. Oh, that's all right. That's in my on your own mentions. That's yeah. in my on your mentions. I, 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 we all met up and, and we, we streamed this uh, all together at the same time. I had, I mean, four hours. I sat through four hours of a movie and I thoroughly enjoyed it. And 
and for me, there was no point that I felt like, oh my God, you know what, when is this going to end? You know, just, I was, the amount of like footage that we hadn't seen that like tied this whole it's movie, his version together. I, yeah, thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm glad, I'm so glad we got to see this. I'm so glad we did. Because Definitely all these added. years, yeah, all these years he's been saying, that's not my movie, that's not my yeah. movie. And we say, yeah, whatever, whatever, whatever. And now we got to see his version and um, it really wasn't his movie. It definitely added to the experience that we all kind of got together and watched it as a group yeah, simultaneously. Yeah. Um, it's cool. Right. And so I'll give Empires is a film called uh, Min, Min, Minari. Minari. Yes. With the dude from uh, The Walking Dead. It is. Uh, the Orient, is it it's, Oriental it's the Is it a Korean family come it, to the US? It is. Yes, In yes, the yes. 50s, they buy like a farm or something. Oh, I say the 50s. I'm not sure if the 50s. You know the uh, one. You've, you've, who's spoken about this on the podcast, Eddie? Have yeah, it's the um, it's the Korean guy from The Walking Dead. Yeah, I, I, I love it there. I yeah. remember the film he was in. All right. So that's their number three. So many I didn't see this year. Yeah. Yeah. See, we, we're all pop conflicts. Like, if you look at some other people's lists, they're all a lot more arty farty and they're like films that we've never even heard of. Um, yeah. But my number two um, is um, also um, the, the Snyder Cut. I oh! um, I, I decided to give it like a high. Um, Mark, because A, you know, for the last couple of years, I've really been saying I'm, I've got no interest in watching a Snyder Cut. It's just going to be a longer version of what we got. It's going to be rubbish. Then in the run up to it, we watched like the other films. So we watched like um, The Man of Steel. We watched uh, Batman vs. Superman. And then we watched the original Justice League. And I'll tell you what, those two films and this just flowed together so well and, and made such a nice sort of like little trilogy that I so immensely enjoyed it. And like Salim said, um, I actually watched it over two nights. I watched two hours and two hours. And you can break it down like that in between the chapters and it still works. Um, what a different film. They, they're not even the same film yeah. uh, but, but by the end of it. Um, and I just thought it was such a great shame that we're not going to get to see the conclusion of this movie now. Mm -hmm. Was that Whedon show this year? It was, wasn't it? What? The Joss Whedon show. Oh, yeah. The, um, the Nevers. The Nevers. Yes, that was this year. Yeah. That should have been the more ordinary mentions because I did have fun with it. All um, right. Yeah. Oh, okay. me, 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 me. What number are we on? Number two. two. My number two, keeping it in the superhero realm, is Spider-Man No Way Home. Just the cheer joy of the experience in the cinema with people crying next to me, people cheering, people gasping. I, could, I, I don't know if I've ever really had that experience much in the cinema before. Not to this degree. And it just added to the experience of what we're seeing. And even though we... Because of you know us doing a podcast, we hear all the rumors, so we kind of knew ninety percent of what was going to happen. Still seeing it, it just didn't take away from the moments. It was one. I thought it was one of the greatest marketing campaigns of all time, right? Because all we knew were rumors. Like when you watch that trailer, like um, I, I said to Eddie, I go, if you didn't know all the rumors about that film and you watched that trailer, you would not be excited about this film. Probably not. But this is what cinema was made for, these experiences, these sort of communal, just infectious energy that just flows around where everyone just experiencing this stuff and the nostalgia. For 20 years, this has been built up, basically. Which, uh, yeah, it just added to the experience overall. So, so it's, I, it's, home. It's I love it. The, the question I've got now after watching this film is, are now... Like the Remy films and the Garfield films, are they now like a offshoot of like the actual MCU? Yeah, yeah, it all, <laughs> it all counts now. It just adds it, it just makes the whole thing bigger. I love. So the next time we do a, a watch of the entire, like, um, <laughs> you've got uh, to start yeah, you've with got Maguire. Start. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm going to agree with Eddie there. My number two is also Spider Man. Um, just, just the um, being in the cinema. And having just, it really felt like just one big family. Yeah. <laughs> I know it sounds really crazy, but it, that's how it felt. It, just people from each corner cheering. I swear, right? I reckon in this movie, if I reached out, right, to take somebody's popcorn, that would have been like, happily give it to me yeah, as well. Because yeah. like, yeah, this is awesome. <laughs> You're part of our family. It just felt brilliant all the way through. Um, and um, it was nice to see 
and I, uh, um, that what was the weakest Spider-Man uh, in the films that we see, Andrew Garfield's one, for me in this, he seemed like the, the character or... Stand out. Yeah, the one that stood out. And there's talks of, obviously, people talking about how mm. I, I, there might be him mm, making yeah. another appearance and this, that, the other. And I'm so glad because these guys really do add uh, so much to the Spider-Man universe that, that it's nice to see that they may just come back to do other things as well. So number two, definitely on my list as well. Spider-Man. What did Empire think? Uh, so Empire put down a film that I, it was on my list, but I took it off. Um, but The Sound of Metal. I don't know if you guys have seen this. Yes, I did. Was that this year? This film is absolutely This amazing. is a strange year, man. This has just <laughs> been a strange year. That was an incredible film. Yeah, yeah. That could have made my list if I'd remembered it. <laughs> yeah. Um, this, so what's the, the guy's name? Riz um, Ahmed. Riz Ahmed. Yeah. Yeah, great actor. He just seems to be making incredible film after incredible films. We've got a new I one mean, out now on Amazon. I still haven't seen it. Yeah, but for this alien film, invasion mm-hmm. that yeah. may or may not be real. Yeah, and you, you, the thing is, you just don't ever think about what would it feel like if you lost your hearing, yes. and then they Especially do such a, a good yeah, they do such a good job of you making you feel like oh shit, man, like you know what would happen in that situation. So, yeah. and it educated me in that hearing aids don't really work the way that hearing people would expect it doesn't just give you back your hearing no. as you expect as we experience it's a completely different experience like completely mad tinny noise thing that you have to kind of decipher in your head um yeah that was a that was an amazing film right mo you're number one so i can work out what eddie's number one is i have no idea what yours is going to be silent unless it is like the fast and the furious <laughs> uh but my number one um is spider-man no way home um oh. i i thought it was uh probably the best of all the mcu movies me. come home uh, what what surprises you just that you'd have a You'd have that as your number one. I don't know why, but it just surprised me. Well, I mean, if you think about it, I'm 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 a fan of these films, and what they did in this film was they essentially serviced the fans with like mm. so much of like fan service. And I was saying to Simon because I just watched all the Remy films, all those really tiny little bits that they in the dialogue and the the the, the way that they would frame a shot or something like that. That was all still fresh in my mind. Um, and even looking at the charts of like the rental films at the moment, you can see the Spider-Man films are like very, very high up there. So lots of people are going back and watching those. Um, I did feel the film was a bit clunky in the middle, but I'm willing to kind of forgive that because what they did, um, I don't think we've really seen in cinema before. They really took like these old films that people have forgotten about, that like you know, 20 odd years old, and literally like drag the character kicking and screaming like into this multiverse revitalized yeah yeah and, and i'm so excited for what they've got uh what what this has been used to set up the rest of like the next couple of phases yeah my number one most probably figured out someone's probably figured out is dune now i've been a fan of the dune story for a long time and just seeing it brought to, to life again but to just a level of expertise that it's never had before and budget it was just a joy and it was a joyful massive expansive experience that is rarely had in the cinema so the biggest screen you can get if, if a cinema suddenly decides they're going to do this and put this back in the sh- cinema again definitely worth going to see if you haven't seen it yet loved it and i get what people complain about i guess it's a little different for me because i do know what the story is going forward beyond the point that it cuts off but and I was expecting it to happen at the point that it did happen. So it wasn't a surprise for me. So I guess that gives me a different experience, but didn't take away from it. It's not the form. fact that it's a surprise. It's just that the, the end of the movie is just anticlimactic. You, you, you kind of no, feel, that, you feel I, that the journey has that. just started. I get that. I can't, I can't argue with that. And it truly has just started. Like There was no other logical place to do it, yeah. to be honest, to, for it to be satisfying. Like Maybe when... You know, there was the big raid and they had to run at first, but then you'd still be yeah. kind of pissed after that. But then, now you're kind of thinking there's only one film, so are we expecting, like, the two. return of the... Oh, there's two films they're going to do. This and then the third one, he said. Oh, we'll have oh, the, the third one? next book. The, there's a book on the, one of the books after, God King. 
So I, I'm expecting like the Return of the King style, like next film. Yeah, it, it's not <laughs> structured the same way at all. <laughs> but you know, you never know how they do it. But yeah, Doom definitely loved it. Roger. All right, my Tell one. How much yes, you love was... Red Notice? <laughs> my one, my number one is uh, <laughs> No Time to Die. Oh, really? hey, yeah. So the reason why it's uh, number one for me, I felt that um, it, it was slightly bit long, but everything about this film, I, this is actually two twice now that I've, I've, uh, that's, um, I think it was, I can't remember when, um, a couple of years ago, uh, it, a Bond film reached my number one again. Had to be full uh, up. Yeah. And now it's this one. I just thought that up. this was a nice, you know, completion Skyfall. to to the I think it was Skyfall um, to to the uh, to the Bond saga. I mean, to the um, Daniel Craig saga. Yeah, him yeah. being Bond, it was a nice completion. It was two and a half hours of you know a bit of mystery, a bit of good action. Um, him doing his thing. I just had fun with the film, to be honest, and uh, it's the one that I remember the most out of all of them, even though I saw it, um, you know, uh, a little while ago. But I really did like this film, which is interesting because um, like I'm, I'm surprised that you guys, it just wasn't on your list at all. Was did, Can I ask I that? It. Did it actually reach? I it. Was it? Yeah. But I don't think Mole didn't think too much of it, did you? I struggled with this film. I, I watched it like over three periods in one day. Um, I just felt maybe I wasn't in the mood. Um, I'd watched Spectre the day before, which I actually quite enjoyed. Um, I felt like there was no real villain. The villain doesn't appear till like he halfway through the film. He is yeah, the weakest yeah. element of this, definitely. Yeah, for me. Um, um, d- d- could it be that that you were just like bonded out, like you had so much bond? Uh, you I don't so... know. I mean, I think if a, if a movie is good, it's good. It's going to grab you, right? Uh-huh. And maybe like five years from now, I'll watch it again and I'll say, you know what? I was wrong. It's a really good film, like I did with like finally, like I've started enjoying like Casino Royale after years of like disliking. Yeah. I, I will say it was a very gorgeous movie, though. It, like, yeah. The lighting, the set design, every it just looked beautiful. Mm. I will give it that, especially all the stuff in like um, Cuba. Cuba, we know why you love the Cuba parts. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Um, all right. So uh, uh, the number one for uh, Empire is Dune. It's the the film of the year. Very good. You redeemed yourself, Empire. Um, Mo, one of your mentions. Honorary mention. So um, the film that I was kind of tossing up, would it go into five or not, was A Promising Young Woman from um, earlier oh, in the yeah. year. Yes, 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 yeah. yes. Yeah. Um, that was good. News of the World with Tom Hanks. Do you remember that? That was good as that well. That was a good film. Wow, yeah. yeah. Um, I Care A Lot. Mm-hmm. Um, Shang-Chi, uh, the first oh, yep. like, martial arts movie yeah, in the yeah. MCU. Um and Ridley's other film, The House of Gucci, House of Gucci. Uh, which is also, I thought, really, really enjoyable. Mm. Um, all good. All good selections. My honorary mentions have to be uh, Fresh French Dispatch, a movie which I loved. I love all the dude's films. Uh, for some reason, my brain damage is making me forget his name. Where's Anderson? Oh. Obviously. But yeah, amazing cast as these films always have the quirkiest of quirky movies but you know we, that's what you go there for so Francis Batch amazing uh, <laughs> Pig <laughs> an amazing film so just to let Nicholas you know Cage. Hold on, I'm not done I'm not done Stop. then I was going to say Pig is also on their list as their number uh, yeah it's number 13 on their list Okay, yeah. Yeah, it's, it was a surprising film. You don't really expect Nicholas Cage to pull out these sort of films with the deluge of crap that he seems to be churning out. But it looks like he's turning the corner, at least by the last few that he seems to be doing. But yeah, Pig was great. Uh, Cherry, Tom oh, Holland showing that yes. he legitimately can act. And that was a great story of a That was a veteran. very, very good film, yeah. Developed with a drug addiction. Green Knight, fucked mm. up my brain, but still was in a good way made me really think and that, I think that's a good thing when films stick with you over a couple of days because I just continually was thinking about this like what the fuck did I just watch <laughs> uh, a film I saw recently Licorice Pizza P- Licorice Pizza Paul Thomas Anderson uh, yeah a film that evokes nostalgia even though I wasn't alive throughout the 70s to experience that 
this sort of teenage love affair, but still you feel it. And it is kind of weird. People don't seem to be talking about the fact that, <laughs> well, I'll get into this when we review it properly more with our, with the next episode, but it's a story of a 15 year old boy who uh, meets a 25 year old woman and the film is there, them falling in love. And it's never pointed out for, to be weird, but if that was reversed, <laughs> See, the, the, the difference there is like that's every teenage boy's fantasy, right? It is, but <laughs> yeah. it's never really your, no one's no one has a problem with it in this film. It's like everyone's fine with it. And it's the seventies, like, yeah, it's a different time. But if that was the other way around, that would be so crazy. But yeah, it's still a cool film. And the Snyder Cut I had on there. Oh, and Cruella. Cruella was. This I'm year. kind of Cruella really Cruella. surprised. Cruella, Cruella yeah. was a surprising one. Yeah. yeah. I'm very surprised that you did not put down the Snyder Cut. No, it's in my honorary. It's in, it's in the honorary, yeah, yeah, but it's not like in your list. Yeah, it, it still falls behind the others. I think the others were better experiences for me. So you preferred the uh, Josh Whedon cut? Oh, <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> yeah, and like I said, Cruella as well. That that deserves a that was a surprise as well. Did not expect to, to enjoy that, but it was good. Yeah, um, honorably mentions are you know Fast and the Furious. No, you know how can we how can we leave that out? Such a such a good movie. Mm. Uh, shame Dwayne wasn't in it. Um, at the Matrix, you know, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> obviously I'm just taking the piss. But uh, the, the films that you guys mentioned, absolutely just spot on, man. Uh, you guys have highlighted like a lot of the films that I was thinking about. Well, we as gonna well. mention worst, worst I was gonna say, you, I was gonna say, did you not have like a like a category for like you do? I, right. I don't have a I don't have a category, but I've got the one film that hit the worst film of the year for me. Um would that be the major on the count of three? Oh more uh, uh, <laughs> too uh, soon because I think okay. we would all said it. No, but... no, 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 oh no no no, no, no. I, I've got a different one from that. I've got I've got a different one as well. Okay, okay. For all me right, it's so... the Matrix because it's the biggest letdown. I had even though the second trailer had me a little worried. Still, oh my god. The fact that it came out the way it came out just yeah. pissed me off. This pissed I me was off. so upset, man. I was I was honestly, I was like literally in, in, in my mind, I was just swearing at this film whilst watching it on this at the cinema. Um, luckily, I had a bag of popcorn to keep me entertained, right? But I, I just, honestly, this was just garbage. Really was so upset. You know, a, a couple more films just for honorary mention, because uh, we haven't mentioned them, and I feel bad that we haven't, but Free Guy. Free Guy was, I thought, was very good. It was all right. Uh, White Tiger. Do you remember that from the beginning of the White year? White Tiger, yeah. yes, yes. The, that was good. the Netflix movie. Good, um, yeah. and, I, and I think... Um, where is it? It's uh, Judas and the Black Messiah. It's probably going to get mentioned at around awards times, but I don't think any of you guys have watched it. Mm. So what was your worst? Right. So my worst, my biggest disappointment of the year was something I was so looking forward to. And when it hit, I was just like, why did they even bother? But it was the Sopranos prequel, The Many Saints of Newark. It was just like, you watch yeah. that and you're just like, why? Why have you done? You've got such fantastic ideas here, but you have executed them in such a poor way. This was a pointless movie to make. Mm. All right. The most friggin' awful film for me was Candyman. I hated that experience. Oh, (laughs) yes. I so hated that experience. I was so upset watching this movie, and I was like, what? Have they created? What is going on? And so many people love it. Critics love the film, which just baffles me. Like, what? this oh, isn't a horror film at all. Yeah, only to know that afterwards people are saying, this is like the best movie I've ever seen. And I'm like, brilliant. Oh, where is this coming horror from? Horror films are not supposed to be social commentary. Like, I get that, you know, the the, the, the other the dude Jordan that did Pill. us. The dude that did, yeah, Jordan Pill. He He's good at meshing those two yeah. aspects of film, but Candyman just did it in just this pretentious way that was just not enjoyable at all for me. No, and there was so much potential. Uh, there was there was so much promise as well. Like this film could have gone in so many interesting directions, but mm. nope, they stuck with this stupid. Oh, I don't want anyone to go, go into it. Um, what are you going to say? I, I noticed that between the three of us, we didn't even mention whether it's honorary on the list or worst Ghostbusters. Oh, I forgot about that. That was fun. <laughs> I'll stand by that being a fun film. I enjoyed I had an enjoyable experience watching that. I, I, I didn't mind Ghostbusters, um, but it just didn't feel like Ghostbusters for me. You know, um, it just I, I, I preferred it better than the the the, the previous film that came out. But yeah. yeah, but again, it just didn't really do anything for me. I was, yeah, had 
It's like a free star movie, but that's about it. Yeah, yeah, free, free enough. Um, I have to mention <laughs> something which straddles worst film of the year, or worst list at least, and also <laughs> any any honorary mention, and that's Malignant. That was a film that was terrible, but it was so entertaining in its terribleness that <laughs> I've been recommending it to everybody who I, I meet. It's a, I'll actually. It's a so, stupidly fun film. <laughs> another stupidly fun film is old. I, ah, I don't know if you've seen that, but yeah. I, I thought to myself, okay, do I like this? Do I not like this? What the hell is happening in my mind here? You told but, me you liked it when yeah, you said it. I didn't, said, I didn't mind it. It's good. It was good. Yeah, I, I liked it. I just thought it was very, very different. So, you know. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay, so that's our roundup. So, Mo, do, do you want to do a quick roundup of what's coming, coming in? 2022. In 2022, or at least what we're looking forward to. So what stands out immediately before even looking at the list? Um, so, it, the, well, what comes immediately is literally next month is like Scream 5. But this was a year that I watched like all the Scream films. Oh, um, okay. and, I, and I've got a hankering to watch number five now. Wait, wait, did you did you say Scream? Scream. scream. Yeah. New Scream's coming. Right, so I saw the trailer for this. I'm, I'm actually really surprised. I never knew that you were a screen boy. Well, I, I just watched them like all this year. Yeah, I don't. For, yeah, for some reason I have no interest. Like the first screen, maybe the first two was right. They were, they were decent enough, but yeah, they, they were the films that got sillier as they went on, but they were still like just really enjoyable. Okay, all right. Um, I'm trying to think. Batman. 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 Yeah, is yeah, the yeah, film yeah, yeah. That I think we're all looking forward. To. I don't know about Mo, Mate. Yeah, Batman's but... definitely up there. Um, and that's all... that's in March. Batman, uh, Top Gun, Top Gun, the new Top Gun is uh, Mission Impossible next year as well. It is indeed. Yes, 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 yes. Everyone will be looking forward to that. And you know, I'm just curious to know what they're going to do with Doctor Strange. So I've got a feeling they're going to pull out a lot more weird. And wonderful. That's also that's coming like March or something, isn't it? Yeah, March, yeah, yeah. or May, so, or somewhere around then. Those four, definitely for me. A um, couple of films I'm just definitely. gonna throw out at you. Then is um, we saw the trailer last week to The Lost City. Uh, that was a Sandra Bullock and um, oh, what's gosh. his name? That looked horrible, <laughs> man. <laughs> it looked like a fun little film. Um, yeah. But obviously, the biggest film next year is going to be. The unbearable weight of massive talent, starring um, oh yeah, that was fun. <laughs> that was fun. Nicholas Cage. So, starring Nicholas Cage. Uh, if you haven't seen the trailer yet, Eddie, uh, Asylum. Uh, yeah, I have. It's, oh, yeah. It looks very good. Yeah, it just looks nuts. It's going to disappoint. I know that, but just between now and the film coming, you have like this hope that that it will be a a, a cool little meta film. Death um, on the Nile looks good. Death on the Nile, yeah, yeah, it does I, look very I, stylish. It looks very good. So. Uh, John Wick, although I think that's now been postponed by a whole year, apparently. Yeah, I'm not. Yeah. Uh, then there's one that you're really excited for, um, Northman. Yes, yes. You know what? That may be up there with Batman for me. That trailer awesome. just impressed me so much. It does look very good. So good. Um, have you seen the trailer for that? Uh, no, I haven't seen so, it. So imagine like a movie version of Vikings. Oh, yeah. No, no, I have seen the trailer. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Um, but quite possibly, um, something that might upstage Batman, there's a real possibility, is Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, part one. Oh, yeah. Because that part, four, that, that first film was so good. It was great. Yeah. And I'm just um, curious. Oh, <laughs> don't forget, Avatar 2 supposed to be next year. I'm just about to say that. Just about to say, next Christmas. <laughs> Are um, they doing any sort of... I remember when the first one came out, they did this whole 3D thing. Are they doing like something special with this, or I think that whole thing has just come and gone in that like that ten years? Uh, mm. Yeah, no one seems to be bothering. Even though Spider- there were Spider-Man screeners in 3D, but yeah, they don't really seem to be pushing that. But wasn't the whole thing with um, Avatar the frame rate that they were he was shooting at a super high frame rate? No, I think that came after. That was like the Hobbit. Like the, I think yeah, the it was 3D, the Hobbit. Yeah, the, but he said he was. Thing. But he said he was going to do that same thing with this one. That was going to be oh, even, an even higher frame rate than what the I, Hobbit was. You know, like you just mentioned, like Spider Man. I actually can't remember a listing at my local view for a three D showing of Spider Man. In fact, so, I can't remember a three D showing for anything in like. So we saw Spider Man in three D, but that was at the IMAX. Yeah. So apart from that, all the other screens, if I'm not mistaken, were standard. Yeah. Okay, so some cool films next year. Um, there is also don't forget oh. Scorsese's The Killer of the Flower Moon. I'm, I'm surprised you're not mentioning um, 
one film in particular. Oh, I was going to lay that to the end, Eddie. Go the film, it. the best movie of next year <laughs> is going to be Kevin Smith's Clerks ah, 3. God. I'm telling you now, that's going to be my number one next year. He probably will, out of spite, it, it, no matter yeah, how he bad probably it is. will, yeah. No matter how bad. Um, um, but we are, you know, I'm looking forward to, like, Scorsese's Killer of the Flower Moves, even though that's behind an Apple paywall. Um, and potentially, maybe even Kitbag from... Um, Ridley Scott. It's hard to be to feel anticipation for films that I have no idea what the story is going to be truly and how it's going to look. I need to see a trailer at least to really feel like, oh, I can't wait. Just, all you have to know is Scorsese and the Ridley. That's it. It's true. It's true. You never know with Ridley, but yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, anything else you guys want to mention that we haven't already? Nope. Hey, a yeah. yeah. Definite silence. All right. Guys, what were your top five films and TV of 2021? And what are you looking forward to in 2022 that we haven't mentioned? Or oh, have, you know, let us know your perspective. And what are we wrong about? Like, who had the best out of the three of us that you feel was like the, the, the truest representation of what you loved? Let us know. Mo, how can they do so? Folks, if you want to email us, we are at tatmpodcast at gmail.com. If you want to tweet us, we are Talking Movies 3. And if you want to follow us on Instagram, we are Talking at the Movies. Thanks for joining us, Salem. Finally coming out of hiding. I would join you. I would join you next year. Don't worry. At the same time. <laughs> yeah, right at the very <laughs> end. All right. So from me to race. Me, Mo. And your boy, Salem. See you guys next week. Later. Peace.